Hello and welcome to a Shy Biz Hub conversation. Shy Biz Hub, an initiative of World Business Chicago, is committed to serving Chicago's small business community. Today we are proud to present a conversation with the Small Business Bureau on how to register your business with them. For information on COVID-related resources, support, and information on upcoming webinars, we invite you to turn to our support portal, shybizhub.com forward slash COVID-19. It is now my pleasure to invite Jasmine Garcia, Program Manager, Shy Business Hub, to begin today's conversation. Thank you, Andrew, for the introduction and welcome everyone. We're really excited to have you here today. As you know, this is our second part um, of you know providing these kinds of webinars for our business resource providers. Um, and I want to share a little bit more, you know, about what Shy Biz Hub is. Um, and you know how we're utilizing your expertise for our small business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, and as you know, some of the folks that are tuning in, they might not know, you know, with all the transitions, but you know, Chibis Hub is the city's online portal that links all of the expert service providers like you to our small business owners and entrepreneurs um, and startups that are looking to start grow or scale their business. You know, in this uh, wake of the coronavirus pandemic, we quickly shifted our work um, and we were just sharing with Heather too today that like this is our second one for our business resource providers because we want to ensure that we're building out content that is useful for you so you can share with um, our small business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, we do uh, collect all of this information and we share it on our portal, Chibis Hub. If you haven't taken a moment to visit our COVID-19 resource page yet, please do so now. Uh, I. It, happy to um, you know welcome Kendra, the other half of Chibis Hub, to share our agenda and what more we have going on. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Thank you. So as Jasmine mentioned, we are extremely excited to have all of you with us today, and we hope that you are taking notes. Heather has some some great information to share. So. We will have one panelist today. I know that um, when you have tuned into previous webinars, you've seen multiple people, but we have a great expert. So we know that she's going to definitely um, fill the, she's gonna actually take, take, the, take the place of three people actually. So she has some big shoes to fill. And so we are going to learn a little bit more about Heather and what she does. And then after that, Jasmine and I will dive right in. We have tons of questions that we want to ask Heather, and we want to learn more about the Better Business Bureau. So I want to provide a little background on who Heather is and what she does. And so Heather is the Director of Operations at the Better Business Bureau. And the Better Business Bureau um, services the Chicago and Northern Illinois um, areas, just so you guys are aware. Uh, she has been with the Better Business Bureau for eight years, so congratulations. And um, she's had a focus on customer experience as well as um, bringing her not-for-profit experience that she's had for 10 years to the Better Business Bureau. And so Heather is originally from Las Vegas, and she's been here with us uh, in Chicago since 2009. So we wanna welcome Heather. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. So Jasmine and I wanna dive right in and we really want you to share with your fellow colleagues uh, that, that are tuning in, what is the Better Business Bureau? So I know we hear so much about it. And sometimes when people hear the word Bureau, they become a little frightened. So if you could share with us what the Better Business Bureau does and if you can tell us what communities you service um, in the Chicago area. Thank you for that intro, Kendra. Um, yes, um, so the Better Business Bureau, we, the Bureau does scare people. We are not a government agency. We are a neutral third party uh, and we help to foster an ethical marketplace between um, businesses and consumers. Um, with self regulation. So uh, we do that with different uh, free services that we offer to help sometimes bridge the gap between businesses and consumers, um, as well as just helping to foster that ethical marketplace where buyers and sellers can trust each other. Um, and then some of the service services that we offer um, would be, we have a lot of core services that we offer. So in our 
our area here, we, are, we have a lot of free services. So everything that the BBB offers is free for both businesses and consumers. And that includes uh, dispute resolution all the way through uh, mediation. We do use a third party for mediation. Should a complaint get to that point, uh, we use a third party to help resolve that issue and that is all free of charge. Thank you, Heather. That was super. I mean, that's you've already got us started on a great foot because Kendra and I have this this conversation, you know, with the small business owners. And it is always you kind of just see like the face. <laughs> no one says anything with the little scared, right? Um, but just saying now, even that you provide these free services, that's so incredibly helpful for our audience to know that, you know what, like one, don't look away, like don't be scared. They're here to help you. They're here, you know, for any of the services that you need. But on top of that, you're free. So um, I want to ensure that we get also right to it in the sense, you know, Better Business Bureau. Um, a lot of folks don't know, you know, that, you know, they can go and register with you. And we want to talk a little bit about that. Can you walk us through the process on how you even register your business with the Better Business Bureau? Um, and then, you know, what are the benefits to register with them? Yeah, definitely. It's really easy to get your business registered with the Better Business Bureau. Uh, the website is actually bbb.org backslash get listed. Uh, and then there's steps in there. It's basic business information. It's about 12 boxes of information to fill out. And the key points in order for us to create a business profile with an accurate rating for the public to see would be including the important information like the business name, um, the address, uh, the start date. Uh, that's really important uh, for us to have that information as well as uh, the owner name and the contact person. And those are the key, we call that the basic five. So if we have that basic five, we can create that business profile um, and then have an accurate rating with that as well. Um, the benefits of having a BBB business profile, the main thing is visibility to consumers for a business. Uh, you can go to bbb.org and let's say that we have um, you know, a plumber, uh, on this call, and I know that's so general, sorry, that's just always what I go to is BBB, but um, home services is a big niche that we have. But um, you, as a consumer, I can go to bbb.org and search plumbers within my neighborhood. I can type in my zip code and it will narrow it down to miles within my zip code of a business that serves me. And then from there, it's gonna bring up a list of everyone that's registered with us. And businesses that maybe we've never heard of before that as a consumer they come up right away and that then brings visibility for that business and the consumer can then contact them um, with that on the they would click on the business profile and it would give uh, the consumer all of the business information website if they have it phone number email things like that as well as a link uh, to submit customer experience so we have customer reviews and things like that um, where a business can encourage consumers to share their experience with them and that will be posted on uh, their business profile as well. Um, some of the other benefits are the inquiries that we receive at the BBB. We receive over, this year alone, we've received over 5.2 million inquiries. Uh, and that's people either going to bbb.org and checking out businesses within our area. And this is specifically to Chicago, it's 5.2 million visitors. So um, they can, go to bbb.org or they call in. And um, we recently got a, a thank you note for someone that wrote to our team and said, thank you BBB for uh, putting me in touch with the perfect plumber. Um, and so and that's, those are little benefits that they call in and we can send them a list or refer consumers to businesses as well that we have in our database. And if they're not registered with the BBB, we don't have that information. So it definitely is beneficial. Thank you, Heather. So. Visibility, visibility, visibility is what I'm hearing. So that's phenomenal that someone took the time to write that note um, and share their experience. And so I want to have you elaborate a little bit on, so Jasmine and I, we are on the Better Business Bureau site and we put in all of the information and we're going through that step-by-step -step process you just mentioned. What documentation is needed? Because as we work with the business community, we have found that sometimes people are afraid to pursue opportunities because they don't have the appropriate paperwork. So is there any appropriate or, or critical documentation that's needed to be uploaded on the site? There is no required documentation. That's You just type in the information and then from there um, on our side, we just process that and then a business profile will be live within a couple of business days. 
pretty, it's a very simple process and it's a quick process. And yeah, we don't require a lot to get that process started. Thank you for that, Heather. I'm gonna go a little rogue right now just because I think it's very pertinent to the second question that I had asked you. But one of our audience members, um, as, you, as you probably know, um, a lot of our business resource providers are nonprofits. And so one of our audience members asked us today, you know, does the BBB give an endorsement or a seal of approval to nonprofits? Uh, the BBB does not endorse or recommend any businesses. However, we do have accredited charity programs. Uh, and we also, so you can use a seal. It's a little bit different than the BBB logo that's here behind me, uh, but it is a charity seal. And it's from Wise Giving Alliance, which is a part of BBB. If you're able to, can you share um, a little bit more about that? Because as Jasmine mentioned, we have some people that are inquiring about that. Um, is there a different website they would need to go to to get that particular approval? Do you know? Or if you can put it in the chat, um, that would be very helpful. So to start, and I'll put it in the chat with that link for BBB.org, but the, that first step would be to get the, go to Get Listed and fill out that form. Um, and then we can get that profile started. And then without getting too much into the weeds, there are differences in our charity programs uh, because of the 501c6s, 501c3s, and different things. So what we do is on the backside, uh, we work with our partners at the Wise Giving Alliance to determine if it should go through them from there, which would then be our partners would uh, do that review for that. Or if it falls within our realm, then we would handle it just like we would any other business in our area. We would just mark that type of business for the public to see appropriately as a not-for-profit. Thank you for that, Heather. Appreciate it. Um, you know, you mentioned it's a fairly quick process to get your business um, on the BBB. Can you talk about and elaborate on what is the kind of like full wraparound services look like for the small business owner that does register on the BBB? Yes, um, so it, uh, it starts with just some simple, um, and I'm sorry, I'm going through my notes here. Um, some of the wraparound services, the key is dispute resolution um, all the way up through mediation. So that is something if it, it's very natural for a business owner to receive complaints from consumers. Um, and so what we do is help within that process. Uh, we can give some guidance on how to best resolve those complaints. Um, and then we can also facilitate through that mediation step if we're unable to help with the reconciliation through us. Um, we also celebrate and call out marketplace role models. So we have what we call the Torch Award. And every November, multiple businesses in different categories win the, uh, get nominated for the Torch Award. and. Uh, we have a, well, we used to have it, now we'll probably be virtual, but every November uh, we have a ceremony where those are handed out along with some scholarships. Um, and we do offer scholarships for businesses uh, that engage with the BBB as well. Um, and then the, we also, um, we report, we separate businesses with, that have ethical business practices in line with the BBB standards from those that maybe don't meet the BBB standards. Uh, so a good business can really, and I say good, but a business that meets BBB standards can really shine out there uh, compared to maybe their competitor that isn't meeting BBB standards. And those are the main benefits with the visibility there and that separating the, the good from the bad, if you will, uh, when it comes to business profiles. I'm curious quickly, just because you, you, know, you mentioned good standing and not good standing for the BBB, could you share a little bit more on what a good standing means, just so our audience can know? Definitely. So in good standing, it's, the BBB has eight standards that we call the code of business practices. And that can, I can actually put that link in the chat as well, and that can be found at BBB.org. And just highlight it, uh, the first one is uh, start with trust. So showing that you have an, a good record in the marketplace, um, you know, answering complaints or responding to issues um, that arise. Uh, it's advertising honestly, and that's in a lot aligned with the FTC guidelines of what's allowed for advertisements. So we have what we call the code of advertising. With that, we will proactively work with businesses if they wanna send us an advertisement and ask us, is this okay to put out? We will review that and let them know if it's in line with our code of advertising or not. Um, 
and and it goes so there's a the next is be transparent um, honor promises be responsive um, honor or it's protect privacy and then the last one is embody integrity so it pretty much covers about everything that if you think about like a business that you want to do business with it covers those eight points where you can feel like you're you're doing business with someone that is going to resolve those issues if they come up you know make sure that your privacy is protected if you're entering credit card information online little things like that that a lot of times i think as consumers we don't always think about um, and it, sometimes as business owners we don't know some of the requirements of privacy policies and things like that so it helps us help a business uh, better understand also what is what is can what would be considered you know um fostering that ethical marketplace where consumers like they can trust them and hire them for services excellent so when you were mentioning a few things about good standing and the difference between a for-profit and non-profit business mm -hmm. i know that our audience would want to know is there a cost or is there a required membership fee um, if you're wanting to be registered with the Better Business Bureau? Does it differ if you're a not-for-profit business? Can you elaborate a little bit on that, Heather? So all business profiles, which is getting listed with the BBB, are free to all businesses, all charities. Uh, we do offer accreditation beyond that, which is agreeing to meet the BBB standards, and there is a cost to that for for-profit businesses. There is a membership fee. For charities, there is not a fee. Uh, it's just the, because the accreditation is a little bit different, so there's not a fee for it to be an accredited charity. Um, it would just be going through those standards, which look a little bit different. There's 20 standards that a charity must meet. Um, but again, it, it, we'd have to look at what type of charity it is to make sure if it goes through that 20 standards or our regular eight standards. Thank you for that, Heather. Um, you know, the reason we even all kind of just got here today is because of the wake of COVID-19, right? Um, we've had to transition everything virtually. And I know for a lot of businesses, you know, they've had to let people go. Just your entire, the way your organization functions has had to pivot. And so we were curious to know if you've seen an increase in interest in starting a new business. Um, what about merging businesses? What does it look like in terms of for your constituency? Yeah, definitely. We were talking about that before we started the webinar about pivoting. So we, we've we seen a lot of changes in how businesses are operating, and we've seen some emerging industries. For example, over the last couple of weeks, we've seen home testing for COVID. We've seen more disinfectant type cleaning companies. So we don't necessarily know about new companies wanting to start, but we've been seeing more that come to us, um, potentially applying for accreditation or coming to us for other reasons. And we're definitely seeing a lot of new industries that are emerging from COVID. And I think that will continue to grow as this continues to go on. Thank you. So we have a lot of organizations that work with tons of people who are looking to start businesses. Uh, Jasmine and I, we, we get tons of emails and calls of people who are like, you know what? I think I'm ready now. I, I'm ready to take my side hustle and, 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 and you know, just push forward and start my business. So if you could share any advice to someone who during this time is looking to transition to being a business owner, what advice could you give them during this time? Um, as a neutral third party, we can't give advice, but I can talk about some best practice tips that we have. One is actually an exciting new program that we're launching in the next few weeks called the PAP program. So that is for businesses that are less than six months old that are trying to find that grounding of what do I need to start my business or what do I need as far as customer service or licensing or so on. Um, and we have other partners such as this partnership with uh, Shai BizHub um, that, or sorry, uh, sorry, I got to slow down here. Um, uh, other partners that we have as well. So uh, it's with third parties, an entity, or yeah, um, with uh, other third parties to help business. They actually 
will work with entrepreneurs as a part of their program. So that's a really good opportunity um, for businesses. And we'll be launching that very soon. And that will help us give kind of, we will walk through, we'll have touch points with the business every month and say, hey, have you taken this step or what can we help you with on that step? So that's really exciting to come out. The advice that I can give that we give to businesses as a whole would be to check with your local and federal guidelines, uh, depending on what city you're in. A lot of uh, licensing might be different. Um, if you're in the city of Chicago, you know, business and consumer protection is a great place to start. They have a, a big resource page as well as licensing information. And then any agencies like IDFPR or Illinois Department of Federal and Professional Regulation, for example, is a, lot of, is a licensing agency. So just really doing that research and going to the proper agency uh, definitely helps get started in the right direction. Thank you, Heather. Um, another one of our audience members, I, I just feel like it's so relevant, so I'm like, let me just like move around, but they were talking about or asking, inquiring about, um, can the Better Business Bureau help get refunds for wrongful charges? Uh, for instance, if the organization was charged an annual fee for something, and that's something that they had canceled, and then like they were getting the runaround. Um, are you able to assist with something like that? Yes, yeah, so the BBB does assist with marketplace interaction. So as a company, if they are a customer of another company, we can assist in that dispute resolution. Uh, we can't always necessarily get a refund because we are that objective third party. So we help facilitate that process to come up with an, amic uh, an amicable solution for both the business and the consumer, or in this case, a business as the consumer. So Heather, how can you, can you walk us through, in this particular case, we have an organization and to Jasmine's point, they're like, I need my money. Mm -hmm. What is the, I mean, I've, I've written <laughs> to the Better Business Bureau in the past. So can you walk us through what does that look like as far as a, a timeline? Because I know with COVID, timelines may change. So can you kind of give us pre-COVID, um, what did that look like in, in having a response sent out to someone that's filing the complaint? And then because of COVID, um, has that changed? Yeah, definitely. So uh, before COVID, our process was that we, we are required to process that complaint within two days of filing it. So if you went to our website Saturday, we would be required to process that by Monday. And that's when, as a consumer, you're notified uh, right then that it's been filed and it gets sent to the business. Uh, the business from there has 10 calendar days to respond to the complaint. If they don't, we take the next step. We let the consumer know and we let the business know that the next step is a reminder. And after that reminder sent, the business has seven days to respond. And if they don't respond, then we have to take appropriate action, which could be just closing it and the rating is impacted. If a business is accredited, they may lose their accreditation. So there's negative impact for not responding to a complaint. The average complaint processing time in the past was 30 days. From start to finish, resolution, everything was 30 days or short, shorter. Um, I think our av we're required by our national office to uh, resolve them within 30 days. Um, our average is about 18 days at our local BBB here. Now with COVID, we've seen a big change with that, especially because of our marketplace. We have a lot of larger businesses that are really, really struggling because they maybe were event services or airlines. And their complaints are, I mean, it's taking sometimes up to 90 days to resolve those complaints. And we are understanding of this and we are allowing businesses more time to respond to complaints and we're confirming that they're still operating. So if we get a new complaint filed, we do call to make sure that they're operating so that we're not punishing them if they can't operate during COVID or if something changes during these times. So we're a little bit looser right now with our timeframes on both sides, just to make sure that we're not you know, we're not punishing a business for things that are out of their control, but we're also keeping that within reason so we don't just let things go out and not be responded to or resolved with the consumer. Thank you for that, Heather. So I was looking at, taking a look at your website and I think even right now, you know, in the midst of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen a lot of just businesses rise like with scams. 
you know, people are getting scammed left and right. If it's not like, oh, I got the magic cure for you for COVID, you know, it's everything else. So, I mean, what is that looking like uh, within here in Chicago? Because I know you were talking about your business, uh, your office here in Chicago. Have you seen an increase in specific, you know, type of um, business or like, how are you mitigating all of that? What does that look like um, for, you know, because I think while we're also, um, we have businesses and organizations part of Chibis Hub, they're also consumers at the same time, right? So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. And your scam tracker, because I noticed I'm like a little curious. I'm like, what is that scam tracker? <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's the first thing I was going to mention was scam tracker. Um, but it is very tough for us to navigate because these are emerging, um, emerging industries. So uh, we're, we're going with this as much as businesses are, but we also have the government agencies that we can lean on because we do partners with a lot of them and we attend regular meetings with the FTC and different government agencies in Illinois and in Chicago specifically. So that helps us be able to navigate what might be a scam or worrisome and what might just be an emerging industry that we should watch for a little bit. Um, and Scam Tracker specifically is a place where anyone can go to bbb.org in any service area and put in information if they feel that they've been scammed. So right now a big one would be the masks, right? People are ordering masks or they're claiming they're buying what they think is, you know, the N95 mask, but then they're getting nothing or they're getting some disposable paper mask. Um, just that's what we're seeing with COVID. You know, there's a lot of other scams, but like romance scams and things like that on scam tracker as well. Um, so people can go enter that information and put how much money they spent, the name. We process those here and then we post those out if they meet all of our guidelines. Um, because some people can call a scam a scam when it's not. So we make sure that we verify all of those before we post them out on bbb.org. Um, and then that allows consumers to and the businesses also that are consumers to go there and just check maybe you got a phone call from someone maybe you see a website or you got an email you can actually search and scam tracker and it will show you within our local area how many scams are active right now regarding that same thing it'll give you amounts um, just basically everything it's one of those check before you buy and it's so important to make sure you check bbb.org check scam tracker before you make any purchases especially now with COVID every, so many people are coming out with these new ideas, but it's not heavily regulated yet because this is so new to us. So it's definitely a time you want to be proactive and make sure that you're doing business with a, a good business, a real business, I should say. <laughs> I just wanted to add to that. I don't know if you had mentioned that, but I was looking to, you have signed up for scam alerts because there was a question that we have here of like, how can I keep up? with potential scams and that's kind of how people can get it right like is it across all industries or what are these are they via email what are these scam alerts uh it is via email we actually have a sign up list and i don't have that email in front of me but i can get that email of how you sign up for those and i can make sure that i share that with you to share with everyone that's on this webinar yeah we can definitely share it after um with the recording so thank you for that all right that was i wasn't prepared for scam tracker <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, the requests and the different things that people bring to you, you're like, wow, people are really doing this. So, I mean, one of the good things is that you have something in place. And to, to elaborate a little bit, um, have you seen anything recently with the census? So that's a question that came from the audience. So we want to make sure again, that people are aware of how to take the census, but have you seen some different organizations or different links that people um, are being advised to visit and it's really not the correct link to complete the census? So we wanna make sure that people are aware of that. And are you seeing more people com with, with complaints about that? We have not, surprisingly, we have not seen a lot of that. Um, I don't know if it's because people just see census and they don't really think to go to the link or they don't know that scam tracker on bbb.org exists. So I think it's a mix of both. Um, but we haven't seen a lot of complaints or even received a lot of calls about any false census. Um, I have a feeling because that question was asked, we're gonna start seeing it more often. So it definitely puts it on our radar to keep an eye out for that. Oh, 
gosh, sorry, this mute button. Please <laughs> miss it. Um, no, we, we really appreciate your time, Heather. This was incredibly informational um, for our, bus our business resource providers on the hub. And then also I'm sure for our small business owners, you know, that are curious about one, like how to register. I mean, you, it's a fairly easy process. I think a lot of us when like, right, you, you roll the eyes because you're like, oh no, here comes basically like compliance coming for me to, to ensure that I'm doing things right. So hopefully we, you know, we've got rid of that myth there. Um, but then also just to make sure that folks know that, you know what, like it's actually super easy. It's like at a click of a button. Um, I know you'd mentioned uh, you share a couple of, of um, links via the chat, but we can also do so, like I said, once we share this recording, I just wanna make sure that we share with the audience um, your contact information if you're okay with that or if there's another email where um, again our BRPs or small business owners can get a hold of um, for any other questions that they may have um, but I really appreciate to know like I know we appreciate because if someone comes to us we're like actually it's a super easy process like you don't have to do too much and you don't have to have all this like long list of documentation that you think you need to have you know. Yeah, definitely. It sounds scary when you think about getting listed with the BBB. So I'm glad that we were able to show how easy it is. Um, and for us, we actually do have a contact and this is specific for um, for everyone on this call and that are that is a part of uh, Shy Biz Hub. It's partners at chicago.bbb.org. So again, I will put that in the chat and I'm actually getting the link now for the get listed page. But again, that's partners at chicago.bbb.org. And that actually does include our operations leadership team. So there's a member of four people on there. So it will be a, when we receive emails, if we receive any regarding this, it is a high priority. And we'll make sure one of our leadership team members does uh, respond in a timely manner. Excellent. I know we want to allow you time to put that information um, in the chat. And I think it's great that you brought up that you, you have a team. You have people that are supporting you. And as more emails come through, Jasmine and I can attest to this. As a team, are you seeing a specific um, driver of different things that people are seeing just overall, um, even with the civil unrest that has taken place recently here in Chicago? We've had it happen now twice. So ha has the team identified anything or are you getting any leads you know from the the businesses as to what are some other complaints that people just need to be aware of and how they can protect themselves you know we haven't received a lot of that a lot of the a lot of the stuff that comes to us or questions or things like that come from the consumers uh so that's where with launching this pre the pap program that will help hopefully bridge that gap and allow businesses to come to us the same way consumers do more and make us aware of those types of things because we can look at it from both sides when it's referred to us. Great. I think that if you partner with Jasmine and I about that program, we can definitely get the word out so that people can be prepared and know what's coming. Well, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Well, yeah. Yes, thank you, Heather. We're super grateful for you to be with us today and share all of this um, incredibly uh, useful information for our business resource providers and also for our small business owners and entrepreneurs. I want to make sure to thank everyone for joining us um, today and then that you're catching the recording after this because we do um, ensure that the recording of today's conversation, along with the many others that we have created uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic are featured on our social media and our special COVID-19 business resource portal, chibishub.com forward slash COVID-19 support. We encourage you all to follow us on social for links to future webinars, grants, and information to help you better run your business during these challenging times. And especially for our business resource providers, please continue to stay engaged. We, we want to continue to grow you know, our network and to ensure that we have content, especially for you, so you can then better serve our small business owners. On behalf of everyone at World Business Chicago and Chibis Hub, we wish you and yours good health and peace of mind. Thank you again.